Hey guys, it's Dave. Today coming at you with a disease state actually uh, that was requested by a follower. It's erythromyalgia. It's also known as Mitchell's disease. And it's a rare vascular peripheral pain disorder that can be seen in kids as well as adults. In fact, generally it's something that you are born with and it will flare up in your early uh, adolescent years, teenage to teenage years, and then carry throughout life. In a few cases, it does show up as an adult, but the majority of the time you're going to see it develop when you're younger. With it, the blood vessels become blocked. And when they become blocked, it's an issue that then creates heat in the extremities. You're mainly going to see it in your hands, fingers, feet, and toes, but you can also see it in your legs and arms and occasionally on your ears and in your face, but not very common. It actually happens several times a day. There's on periods and off periods where the blockage occurs, your hands, your feet, wherever will become red and hot. Those areas can even sweat where the rest of you is fine, but your hands may sweat. Then... As the blockage passes through, your hands or the area of the body will become pale and cool, to the touch even. The severe burning and redness that occurs can be triggered by stress, heat, like temperature heat, pressure, mild activity. So exercise can bring it on. So if you're going to exercise, and it still is important to exercise, you need to choose different activities like Tai Chi, yoga, swimming, things like that. Exertion, if you're lifting things, that can bring it on. Insomnia can bring it on. Infection can bring it on. Caffeine, spicy foods, alcohol can all be uh, things that would bring it on as well. One of the big things that you can actually cause yourself to have more episodes is if you're not drinking enough fluid, specifically water. If you're dehydrated, those blockages are going to tend to occur more often. So you really need to stay hydrated with this disease state. It can be either primary or secondary. If it's primary, it's due to a specific gene mutation which is why I said it's mainly hereditary. That gene mutation, there's no treatment for it, but you will know about it at an earlier onset with it being primary. Secondary, it can be brought on due to other conditions, such as peripheral neuropathy, polycythemia vera, high cholesterol can do it, mushroom or mercury poisoning. With that, Kind of weird, but you want to watch out where you're getting your fish from because there are a lot of lakes across the country and into Canada that have high levels of mercury in them. And if you eat several servings of fish a week from that lake, you can be prone to mercury poisoning. Uh, as well, autoimmune disease can make you prone to this. Thrombocytopenia can also make you prone to this as well as thrombocythemia. So several different blood disorders can make you prone to this to get it as a secondary disease state. Things you can see with this, aside from the temperature um, and the discoloration and the sweating that I mentioned earlier, pain obviously can occur with this. Swelling, you can see edema, especially in the feet and the hands, you will see swelling with that. Itching, tingling sens sensation in there. So it may be going numb, you feel the going numb, you may feel prickly feelings along, you can see wh where I mentioned that you have neuropathy, a lot of the same sensations are going on with this as well. Very important with this, you do not take ice baths. People that get that think, oh, if I dip my hands in ice or I dip my feet or my legs in ice, it'll help out. You can actually damage your skin and cause reactions to the tissues by doing that. 
cool cloths are fine or laying on a cool surface. The best surface that I can think of, I had a waterbed when I was younger. If you turn your waterbed off, especially in the summertime, you lay on that cool waterbed, it feels great. Patients with this could get the same experience with that. Now, they can treat it with certain prescription drugs. Anticonvulsants like carbamazepine and gabapentin are used. Antidepressants like amitriptyline and venlafaxine are used. Remember with amitriptyline, it can be very dehydrating itself. So you need to really push the fluids and there are other side effects with that that you need to watch out for. In adults, they sometimes treat it with 325 milligrams or 81 milligrams daily of aspirin. They also have used antihistamines like Zyrtec and Benadryl to treat it. Remember, I'm not a big fan of Benadryl because it has linked, excuse me, to dementia with long-term use and even short-term use. So stick to something like Zyrtec. They've also used blood pressure meds to help keep your blood pressure down as well as increase circulation. And of course, for pain medications, you can do things like Tylenol, Ibuprofen, and um, you can get Tramadol, which may help out as well. Now, naturally, some things that you can do. Fish oil or omegas will help improve your circulation, help also decrease your uh, clotting risk with that. So that is one thing that you can look at. Magnesium helps as well, specifically magnesium glyconate. It's absorbed better. Alpha lipoic acid can also help out with this. You need to take those every day. Outside of that, some specialty things that can be done are lidocaine infusions, nerve blocks can help specifically with the pain. Topical antihistamines can also be used like uh, diphenhydramine cream for some relief. But outside of medications and things like that, at night when the, this tends to happen in the evening, use a fan. That will help out. Elevate the area. If it's happening in your hands, get your hands up, your feet, elevate your feet. Like I said earlier, cool packs, cool claws are good. Laying on a cool surface. It's not a fatal disease. That's the good thing. However, it can be annoying and very painful. Remember to do the steps that I took, or that I mentioned before, can help you out. Other than that, the sooner you let your provider know what's going on, the sooner they can get you on a treatment that will help you long term.